Well, how's this for a first? This is our first Famicom game based on an American novel. And for some weird reason, Mark Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer gets two Famicom adaptations in 1989. This is the one that was actually released in the U.S. The other one's the one that people actually know because it's a bit infamous. The most notable thing about Seta's Tom Sawyer is who made it. Winkysoft was an extremely minor computer game developer, and this was their first console game. But two years from now, they're going to work out some complicated licensing deals and release a strategy game on the Game Boy called Super Robot Tyson. If that title doesn't mean anything to you, I'll have to explain that absolutely mammoth series once I reach its one and only release on the Famicom. As for Winky Soft's first console outing, well, it's known as one of the worst games on the Famicom. The plot of the game has nothing to do with the book. Tom just falls asleep in class one day and starts dreaming up an adventure. After you hit start to get past the title screen, you need to pick how many players you're going to use. Breaking with any kind of sane interface, both start and select pick how many players you're going to use. Two-player mode just alternates between players, and player two is Hack. Not Huck. Hack. That's the perils of transliteration. The game has six stages, and there really isn't a consistent theme among them. Stage one has you river rafting. The rest of the game consists of standard platforming. Although the stage four boss puts you in a shoot 'em up, and on stage six, the platforming occurs in a vast maze. Throughout the game, it only takes one hit to kill you. And the placement and movement of enemies in Tom Sawyer no Boken become very unfair very quickly. On the rafting stage, pressing B throws a shot out in front of you, while pressing A jumps. You can move independently when you jump, so you can leave the raft. Of course, if you don't land on the raft, then you die. You mainly have to use that ability to get over some obstacles. The raft section isn't too difficult. It's more annoying than anything else with the slow auto-scrolling and enemies placed in the most awkward areas where you can't reach them. There's this very easy boss at the end where you have to shoot the gator in the mouth over and over again. After that, you start the platforming stages. And here you'll find that short little toss you had on the raft is actually a very short arc. And that arc means that your shots pass over the heads of enemies that are close to you, while not being able to hit enemies that are far away. They basically have to be in the exact right spot for you to be able to hit them. If you do manage to hit them, they'll drop an icon that you can collect. And this is true for any of the stages. Collecting T icons can earn you an extra life, you have to get 20 of them for that. Getting a skull icon reduces your T's by 10. You can also find 1-ups just by themselves in some places. A heart will turn you invincible for a few seconds. That seems to be the rarest drop since I only found this one during my hour of playing. Collecting a slingshot will make your attacks go all the way across the screen and travel in a straight line. So now they really will just go over everyone's heads. Stage 2 puts you in a forest setting. There's tons of easy-to-hit enemies here, so you can earn a lot of extra lives as you play through this stage. Stage 2 also features a very Japanese-looking ghost that it rises out of the water to throw power-ups at you. There's multiple points in the game that you'll encounter something that's distinctly Japanese. And it makes me suspect that this is a game that they were working on, that they just put the Tom Sawyer name on. Why? Well, another bigger company was about to release a game based on Tom Sawyer. The book was in the public domain, so maybe they thought they could steal a little bit of thunder. Basically, the Asylum Films business model. The boss of Stage 2 is a giant gorilla, and it introduces another problem with Tom Sawyer. A lot of these big enemies require that you have some real precision with your shots. You have to hit this gorilla in the face or it doesn't count. And later on, you're going to encounter some tough enemies that stay out of your reach a lot of the time. The third level is a haunted castle for some reason. Here, I don't think there's enough enemies to get you an extra life. There are, however, too many bosses. The real boss of this one is a big statue where you have to hit the gem, 
and sometimes it will release a little demon that you have to defeat. The fourth stage is some tropical clouds complete with palm trees. You know, just like Mark Twain always wanted to put in his book. Here the enemies take a real turn for the nasty. They're fast, offset just enough that it's hard to hit them, and have a tendency to appear in places that you can't get to. You'll spot this balloon as you're getting through the stage. It'll carry you further forward, but you'll need to drop off before you get hit. This is as far as I got in the game. After this level comes a pirate ship that was moved to be the first stage in the US version, and finally a cave complex. When you complete a stage, it shows you how long it took you to beat it. This is so that you can race against the second player, if you wanted to for some reason. I don't know why you would though. I think the worst aspect of Tom Sawyer no Boken is the controls. It feels like there's this little bit of a delay between you performing your input and the action occurring. And unfortunately, a lot of things require some precision in this game. There's also the issue with the number of shots you can have on the screen at once. It results in you firing a short burst, and then there's a gap, and then a short burst again. Of course, you could space out your shots, but that means long gaps between your regular shots. Playing Tom Sawyer in Oboken is an utterly miserable experience. It's a perfect example of how to do an 8-bit platformer wrong both punishing and boring. This is the game that always comes to mind for me when people talk about bad 8-bit platformers.